from the great halls of their house, there are assembled three who hope to one day be the world's greatest driving heroes. Created from the cosmic legends of the universe comes our team captain, the Vision, Bill Fisher. Their soon-to-be Wonder Woman, Vicki Fisher. Our Captain Marvel and head flight trainee, Jennifer Scripchuk. And our Batman, the master of tools, gadgets, and all things mechanical, our mild-mannered soon-to-be billionaire, Alan Danvers. Their mission, to fight injustice, share what is right and wrong, to get you out of your house and come out racing with them, and serve all mankind. They are the Garage Heroes in Training Team. Captain's Log Supplemental. Miss Vicky. Yes, sir. You know what? What? You know, I've been thinking about this Sentinel system. Yeah. Tell me about the Sentinel system. So what I was thinking was we have the one car that's got the aim dash that's slowing us down. Because mm -hmm. installing the aim dash is actually it probably is easy, but it's quite hard the first time. And we haven't figured that out yet. The Sentinel system is really easy to set up. So what I was thinking was, why don't we put it in the uh, Lemons car and we'll worry about the AIM data information separately and we'll, we'll kind of break it down into a project because then we'd have the motorsports video system that we really, really want and we'd be able to stream it. We just won't have all the data inside, but we have the data X outside so we can combine them later. But I think that's a really good solution. So what does the, what does this uh, Sentinel system do? Well, w if it had the aim data, it would have all the data on the screen and you could see all their telemetry and everything live. But we'd be able to not only record it for viewing after the race, but we could actually watch our car during the race. Ooh, like on the monitor and everything? On a monitor? Or if you were at home and I was at a track or if you were at the track and I was at home, you know, depends depends on who gets the little short straw, but we'd be able to watch each other. You know, it's something I've always wanted to do. And you know what? If you're driving, you know what you can do on the aim, on the Sentinel system? What's that? You can communicate to me with your hands and I can't do a thing about it. <laughs> Even better. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, if you need to give a wave or a jersey wave, whatever you need. We could save it and see it on the screen. And then you can have up to three different cameras and it'll have picture in picture. You'll have the basic main shot out the front window and then two cameras where you put them wherever you want. One could be on the driver or one could be on the rear view. It's kind of cool. Then we can upload it onto YouTube. We could. We could bore millions of people on YouTube. I love it. All right. Very well. You know what uh, the only downside I see about this? But your mom and my mom are going to be panic stricken the entire weekend watching this thing to see if everything's going well. This is true. We probably shouldn't tell them. I like the idea of having a sentinel. Mm -hmm. Well, luckily we have them. maybe two. Depends on how things go. We're going to try. All right. That sounds like a plan. That's the sounds, project. We got to get that ready sounds, for the next race. Sounds great. All right. Very well. Thank you, ma'am. This Dominator Dawson is brought to you by nobody, but we do have Vicky. Yay. That's Yay. Wow. You have Ben. <laughs> hey. This, this is Vicky trying to put off the uh, the fake energy. <laughs> I know. My eyes are like half closed. <laughs> right. I'm it's here, though. To be, to, be, to be fair, Vicky has been podcasting a lot tonight and, and been working at it. Yes. This is probably her, this <laughs> might be her last stop. But, this, but just, just to nobody think she rolled into this tire with nothing going on. She's been working at this for a while. <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. All right. We had a listener right in. A new listener. A new right. listener. We had Hell two yes. listener questions in a row. This is amazing. This is one of our best nights of recording. It's uh, it is. very excited. Yeah, it's spectacular. Mm -hmm. Love love to hear from the listeners. It's so cool okay. that anybody listens at all. It, it's spectacular that we have people who aren't named Fisher, Wilson, Scripchat listening, or Dawson. You know, <laughs> who knew? Ain't no, ain't no, ain't no Dawson's listening. Don't worry about it. <laughs> all right. Well, damn it. 
I know. Maybe my dad. Maybe my dad every once in a while. Let's count. We count one. We we heard we started doing this with you, and you're like, I can't stand it. I can't listen to myself. I'm not going to listen. I'm like, damn, I was counting on at least one more listener from this whole series, but <laughs> no, nope, I, I got you nothing. You needed the stats. You needed the stats pretty bad. Uh, that could double us. Um. <laughs> so anyway, this was an interesting question. I'm not sure we've ever answered it specifically, so I thought it'd be kind okay. of fun. Yeah, let's do it. How do you pick a racing series? There's so many ways to answer that question. Yeah, dang, that's a uh, that's a great question. Uh, I mean, one of the reasons that I've ended up doing so much amateur endurance racing with uh, with series like uh, everything from uh, 24 Hours of Lemons to Champ Car Endurance Series to World Racing League or WRL or American Endurance Racing, which is also AER and Lucky Dog. The reason I focus so much of my motorsports time on that is because I used to be obsessed with watching. Um, you know, long form, multiple fast endurance races, you know, watching those Riley and Scott cars, mm-hmm. paint those cars, the cool, you know, BMWs watching Boris said that kind of thing. It was always so cool to me to see, you know, big old ground pounding prototypes back in the day, you know, <laughs> the big v- V12 Ferraris, you know, out there shooting around BMW E36s and everybody kind of working together and just the, the, the sort of layers and strata of competition were always interesting, interesting to me. So that was one of, one of the reasons I shows the series i was into because of the the fandom i had been into before i was physically doing my own racing so that was one of the the, the ways i picked the series that i went to it was just based on my interest um mm-hmm. primarily i mean there are any number of, of reasons to, to get into a, a certain kind of series you know maybe you've always been obsessed with porsche cup and you have the means to be racing a porsche that's sort of some sort of a, a, a pca class it's going to get you as close to your porsche cup dreams you know what i mean mm-hmm. so that you could reasonably um do a version of that would make you happy. I'm just using that as, as, an, as a random example, but you know, sure. say you're, you're focused on, on racing por- Porsches. I mean, one of the, one of the reasons that I got so into doing Miatas for a long time was I uh, had gotten out of karting and some of the, some of the advice I got about what car to get into was, was if you want to be a really good driver and nobody can touch you, get a Honda Civic and learn how to be a badass in a front wheel drive car. And then you can, do <laughs> I bypassed that because I needed some adjustability and, and I didn't want to have to customize a bunch of stuff to get the adjustability I wanted. So, so that's why I headed toward a Miata, but also I was aware that there was a, this is like mid early 2000s, I guess 2005. So there was already a, a heavily growing um, series called spec Miata in SECA and NASA. And, uh, and I thought that would be where some of the best competition was just because I, I had seen how close the racing was and how well subscribed it was big fields. Mm-hmm. And I'd come out of karting. I'd come out of karting where the thing you appreciate the most is just a good race in a big field. Like that's all you wanted in karting. And so I had enough of an ego about my own driving and, and what I thought I could bring to the track that I wanted to be out there doing it with people who would push me hard. And I thought that would be like a big old field to spec me out as at the time. And for a number of reasons it, it, that that car ended up getting being used for endurance racing, not the least of which being <laughs> that the, the guy who wins the national uh, SCCA runoffs this year could turn around and sell that Mazda Miata for probably 75,000 bucks. So it turned out to be a series that had a lot more money involved than I would ever be able to spend to be like competitive at a national level. You know, you, people are spending 10, $15,000 to get a 125 horsepower motor and, you know, going through three or four sets of sticker Hoosiers every weekend at a national event. And I just, it was a scale I was never going to deal with. You know what I mean? So sometimes, sometimes yeah. the, the series you pick might sort of shift. I, I bought that car with the intention of doing one thing. I always kind of kept it spec me out of legal. You know, I never put anything on there that would make it illegal for spec me out just in case I was ever going to head that way or just want to t- turn around and, and sell the car as a spec me out. So that, that, was, that was kind of my half ass way of straddling the line between two series. And our car was always fun enough and competitive enough for what it was. I never needed to go crazy to like do a bunch of stuff to, to you know, crazy endurance racing stuff that might be allowed. You know, I'm, you could gut the hell out of it, you know, lose more pounds out of it and stuff like that. But it, that would make it illegal for this or that. I kind of just try to straddle the line with that car. We all had plenty of fun with it. We, we won a WR, WRL race overall with it, the first one they had in the Southeast. So anyway, it turned out to be a fun car and, it, and very versatile. I mean, that with that with that car and the goal of racing it with a multi-class endurance race, I definitely, I raced with at least, uh, yeah, WRL, Lemons, and Champ with that car, so. Mm-hmm. That was sorry. I, I hope I hope I'm I hope I'm addressing the topic well enough. But that was just kind of my my thought process and some of the racing that I've done and the, and the choices I've made. Nope, you answered it terribly, man. <laughs> uh, there you go, <laughs> Miss Vicky. Was that? How do you how do you pick a racing series? How did, how did you... y'all pick lemons? How, how how did you guys end up in lemons? It was the beginning. Vicky, let me. Yeah. Well, right. How did <laughs> but how did you know what it was? How did you end up racing lemons? Tell us the, your origin story real quick. 
Uh, well, we watched a video. Bill actually yeah. saw the video um, and said, hey, what do you think? And he was already interested in racing, and I didn't want to spend a ton of money on it. So, <laughs> you got sucked into the $500 uh, yeah. car. Yeah. He lied. <laughs> so many Lies. People. Luckily, I already knew enough about racing when I heard that. I heard that premise in like 2007. I would already been doing this shit long enough. I was like, ha, 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 mm-hmm. ha. yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, so, so uh, tell me more. What kind of video was it? Was it a humble video or was it like a lemons wrap up video? How'd they get you? No, it was a uh, everyday driver. They they have a YouTube channel and they used to have some, a show on. Uh, I think it was on Motor Trend. And mm-hmm. okay, they had cool. they had an episode where they went and did the twenty four hours of lemons race up at uh, the ridge, and you know they just had a an awesome and terrible time at the the entire point, and uh, that was when we got started. Uh, Vicky bought the five hundred dollars thing, and I was like, "Cool, <laughs> yeah, you got her, you got your ass." That's right. Little did she know, and uh, that was how we got started. So yeah. But I think when it comes to a race series, I think it's just, you know, as you level up and figure out what you're comfortable with and then, you know, Suppose you're starting. Out, you're, right. you're looking to start. What are you, what are you going to, what are the, I guess, what are the factors you're going to look at? You know, Ben mentioned field count, obviously. Yeah. Well, field count, skill set, acceptability. Um, Budget. What's, it, what's acceptability? Well, well yes, of mean? course. Well, to see if how comfortable you are in the race series alone. Cause, okay. cause some, some race series are a little bit more aggro than others. <laughs> and, you know, you want to make yeah. sure that you certainly have a certain level of comfort with your own skill set to enter into those mm-hmm. um, and be comfortable with that. So, yeah. I mean, not, I mean, some, ra- some series take their racing a lot more, seriously because they probably spent a lot more money on their cars and a lot more to get into those so they're not really there to mess around and have just a good time um so you look at those you know series um and just to see if your car as you level up can handle those series because you you might you might you might be rolling on that thing about the speed of a wheelchair compared to some of these other cars (laughs) and you're just in their way you know that, that's true it's it's funny you mentioned the uh, when you talked to when i asked you to kind of uh, branch out on what you meant by acceptability a little bit like it meant like sort of more like what level of aggression and skill are you the incoming person willing to deal with and it's right. funny I, I talk about i talk about my my aer watkins Glen experience all the on this show all the time but it was so much fun because i got into a big pack of miatas who we were all willing to bang it out like nobody was hitting each other but we were all willing to pull dastardly moves on each other. Like the, the name of the game was like, you know, just running each other hard, you know, trying to pull passes. We, we, we knew it wouldn't always stick. And, and, and the bump drafting, we were bump drafting the shit out of each other. It was like a pack of five or six Miatas. And, you know, you, nobody in lemons, uh, no, you know, nobody racing lemons is ever going to expect to get bump drafted. But, you know, this was a group of people who were used to competing and a lot of them knew each other. They didn't know me, but I, but, you know, from outside the car, how do you know? But this was all a bunch of people who knew each other fairly well and were used to racing. And they knew how, how hard they could be on each other. And for us, that included pushing our little pack along with bump drafting, which, like I said, if you tried, if you tried that on somebody and limit, and limit the race, it would be the end of the world. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. We did it probably, I probably, get, I probably drafted, you know, hit somebody with the, with the bumper of that car and got the rear bumper of that car hit probably about a hundred times in the, in the time I was out there. It was so much fun, but it was a blast. We were all ready for it. You know what I mean? But that's that would be a lot of contact in the lemons contest. You know what I mean? That would be right. That would be a that would be a national incident in lemons. <laughs> so oh yeah, you'd be spending a you'd be taped to the top of your car with a bullhorn. <laughs> yeah, you had to drive all the way home through several several states that way. But yeah, I think that's that's a great point that you bring up. You know, and sometimes it, the series you choose can come down to what do I already have in my garage, or what you know? I was I've been obsessed with having a Corvette. I got a Corvette. You know, I've done a few track days with it, but now I want to race this Corvette. You know what I mean? You, mm-hmm. you, you might be your your series choices might be driven on your fandom, on your, your, what car you already have, what car you're about to get, what car you saw for sale, and then suddenly thought, "Hey, I bet I could use that for this." You know, and, and here's another here's another consideration too. 
um, how versatile is the, the, the vehicle platform that I'm choosing? Can I use this for one thing or can I use this like a Swiss army knife? That, I, I used to, I set land speed records in that Miata on, you know, engine displacement classes. Nobody bothered, bothered with, you know, we, we did all kinds of crap with that Miata that you wouldn't just use a spec Miata for necessarily. We did endurance race and all. So, you know, think about, think about, you know, how many different classes can I use this car for? I'm slowly building a spec E46, but you know, that can be used in endurance racing. You, you can, there's a, uh, a NASA class specifically for them. There's a yep. uh, um, a BMW Club class for them that fits into at least T3 and SCCA. So you know, th- think about how many different places can I apply this thing I'm, I'm putting together or buying from somebody. I think that's another important thing is, is you know whether you want something to be very specific, very specifically. You know, hey, I'm this is my NASA GTS2 car. You know what I mean? Or, nobody's mm-hmm. going to use this for anything but NASA GTS2. Or, or, or the other end of the spectrum where I'm going to use this thing for everything I can think of. It's kind of what we did with my Miata back in the day. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, I, I was going to say, sometimes you just want to race a car. Like, that's yeah. the car I want to race. It could be as simple as that. And then where does it fit? Um, the other thing you got to think about, in my mind, is with your personality or your budget or your time, do you want to go do autocross real quick races one day weekend yeah. or do you want to do endurance racing full weekend more racing time than anything else or do you want to go do sprint racing you know the 20 yeah. 40 50 60 minute race two or three or four a weekend you know that's a, that's, a, that's a good point too you just you i think uh, I'll, tell, I'll, I'll tell you one that got that got me pretty good when it came to thinking about how I want to approach things um was the fact i know i get heat for saying how dumb i am all the time but it's, it's true i am incompetent and dumb the thing i'm good at is driving a race car so one of the reasons that endurance racing with the crew of local dudes appealed to me was i know an engineer i know another engineer i said ben is dumb i know another engineer team you know what i'm saying like yep <laughs> that's true get together you got I, 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 team I, I, or I, solo right yeah, and I mean, and it got, I think, uh, you know, uh, doing it with a group of folks who are all kind of equally invested in labor and money can certainly help you save the cost. And if you guys are all working on the thing together and you're all sort of invested in it and race it together, not everybody has this luxury, but, you know, you're all likely to take care of it a little bit better since you're all mm-hmm. going to have to fix it together. You know what I mean? It's more of a you yeah. can team up and, and end up saving a little money and pooling expertise, which yeah. is the pooling of expertise has certainly helped me many times because I don't know. Sh- you know, I mean, so uh, so I think that's a consideration too. Is is how what kind of what kind of labor resources and brain resources could help me get this done too? And do I need to make this a team, or can I do this all by myself and be in charge of every little bit of it? I mean, yeah. th- th- everybody out there runs the spectrum from a uh, Ben to a Riley and Scott engineer, you know, or the guys yeah. at Pratt and Miller. <laughs> yeah, and you, I mean, you don't want to say budget, but there's budget. I mean, there's definite budget involvement. You can go to. What is it? Super Trofeo in a Lamborghini? Exactly. Yeah, or or just or just or, this guy right. who's a vendor at work who who races WRL sometimes. Like, hey, you want to come race with us? I said, yeah. He's like, yeah, man, it's only five grand a weekend. And I was like, I said, okay, cool, man, thanks. I was like, I'm gonna, uh, yeah, I'm not gonna do it, but uh, it was just interesting, interesting to hear like, oh, it's only this, and I was like, that sounds like a lot, you know. And I'm I'm sure we all end up spending more than the thousand bucks when we go race in a race or something like that. Yeah. I, I know I do, but still that just hearing this morning, just goes like, Whoa, so far, man. and you know, I might, I might try to say box tops and, and not race for a couple of years and go do a Daytona race for those guys just to go say I've done, yep. uh, you know, a race, a race in a nice car and kind of a luxury weekend, but it's not something I can just think like, Oh yeah, I'm going to join these guys for the season, a uh, yep. whole ass season of $5,000 weekends, you know? So yeah. You're right. The, the budget is part of it. And I'm absolutely never going to be able to, to touch the seat of a super trofeo cup car or whatever, but I'll, I'll, you know, if you're, or IMSA or, you know, those are, yeah. You know, if you're a fra- if you're a fracking baron's son, you sure are going to get to do that if you want mm-hmm. to, you know? Exactly. I mean, you're talking some of the racing series towards the top, top, top of the, well, not the top, 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 but the, towards the top you're talking quarter million dollar season mm-hmm. easy yeah we, we, we like who like what are we talking about is that like IMSA. like yeah, the tc the low level IMSA, right yeah i mean it, it goes it, it's not the top top no it's not, i mean like gtd is like gtd is way more than 250 a season i'm sure right i think it is yeah i mean i'm yeah. not gonna find out because Vicky's not gonna see a tv show that says it's 500 dollars <laughs> and say yes you can go so <laughs> Yeah, but I, mean, I think you're talking about even like like T. I forgot what they're called now, but like TCR cars is a little the mm-hmm. lowest spec. You know, not even 
not even like GT4, maybe GT4 is like where might be GT4. Not, not yeah. 250. Yeah, but we're talking, yeah, you're right. You're, we're talking about relatively very low level of what's considered professional racing, but professional in the sense that I'm so professional outside of racing, I have enough money to do this. Yeah. You know and, what I mean? You know, <laughs> I mean, in many parts of the country and many parts of outside of our country, $250,000 in a year is like a house. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so it's uh, well, and, a good, and not, good everybody, chunk of the house. not everybody's, yeah, I mean, not everybody has that money to just throw down a hole, which is what you do when you race a car. Yeah. And that's a weekend. Yep. <laughs> that's a good weekend, I guess. But, you know, so the other thing that I would add that we haven't covered is if you're, if you're at all competitive, if you have that lizard brain, you're going to want to look at the rules for wherever you decide and build or have built the car that maximizes those rules and be able to afford to build it and maintain it and have spares. Yes. Easily. And friends, if you're so competitive that you're real good at reading the rule book, Call Ben Dawson at Garage no, Years of Training. Yeah. Call me or whatever. I'll talk off a ledge, but don't get don't get so cute you get bounced out of the series or people don't want to don't want to race with you because they suspect that you're always dirty. Yeah, right. that can that can I just I just want to say don't cheat. It ain't worth it. I don't care how smart you think you are, you're gonna get busted. It's not worth it and it'll kind of ruin your reputation and, and you know as far as people wanting to compete with you or yep. believing you or thinking that you're like, oh. I got beat by that guy again. Well, well, he cheats, so it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? I'm just, right. I'm yep. only going to stop. I'm probably not going to say this too many times on the podcast, but uh, keep it clean. Don't get too cute with the rules because it would just come up and, and, and bite you in the butt. Mm-hmm. And if you're somebody who enjoys driving and can't build and doesn't know lefty loosey, righty tightsy, don't choose a builder's class. And likewise, yeah. if you could care less about driving, don't choose a driver's class. Choose a builder's mm-hmm. class. Yeah, I mean, for instance, I mean, that's why I'm slowly building a spec E46 because everything is fairly well specified and I do not want to have to think about, oh, what should I do for this? Let me innovate a new system for this. I can build my own exhaust with a TIG welder. I can't do any action, but I can bolt stuff on, which is what that class pretty much is. Buy box, put box on car. Buy next box. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're just not doing so good at putting it on the car, man. Hey, yeah. Well, these kids are going to not be two and five forever. and I'm always going to be lazy, though, so who knows? <laughs> Aim high, Ben. Aim high. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Anything else that we missed, my dear? Nope. Nope. I think ben? we got yeah. it. I think we beat that Yeah. I hope, well, I, I, I hope uh, listeners will hear this when they come back with uh, more more questions or, or things that they thought we might have missed about this. We're happy to come back and talk about it again with uh more context or more questions or more you know information. would be good if somebody had a follow-up question and they said hey i'm thinking about doing this or this yeah. we could go into what we think about each and the pluses and minuses of both i'll tell you yep. everything i think about this series that's right even if we don't know anything we'll tell you what we think i will make stuff up about a series I don't exactly care. hey speaking of which <laughs> yeah. you know what happened yeah. this weekend first time uh, that i know of beck miata had less entries than B spec. Wow, where was that? Mid Ohio. Yeah. No, nah, that's interesting. I think B spec is bigger out there. But yeah, it's a, uh, it's weird. This is just kind yeah. of. But well, you know, you bring up a great point that we haven't covered yet. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Vic. And he's like, I'm out. Uh, I'm out. <laughs> but, but, oh, I'm me back. so. I'm but when so... you're when you're when you're picking a a, a platform or to try, deciding what vehicle you'd like to compete with. Go look at your local results for the track where you're most likely to do it the most. Local, if you're not super national. excited, to, yeah, look at your local track. But you know, if you're super excited about, I think we've used this, we've used this example before, but a long time ago, I think there was a Spec Focus series in NASA mm-hmm. I think that was so. pretty well subscribed in the Midwest. And I was like, oh, cool. So Focus is kind of cool. It's front wheel drive. Nobody's really doing it. Uh, you know, you don't hear a lot about that. Be a, maybe a cool car to race. And I went and looked at my local. You know, is anybody racing these at NASA races at VIR? And there were zero entries. So I could have not checked that, gone all the way and gotten a focus, built myself a spec focus, and then showed up and they're like, "Hey, where's the other spec focus racing at?" So, so just check your local, check your local uh, uh, results, see what classes are, are subscribed enough to the level you want, and then try to make a de- decision based on that. But but look and see what people are doing near you because what you assume might be a cool class to go do you might be out there all by yourself or just with one other dentist weirdo like yourself. Yeah, I mean, uh, we were we were kind of similar. Vicky and I did a lot of our training with NASA Great Lakes, and and we started talking to people like Jaime from uh, the Racer FF podcast, and he's talking about Honda Challenge. I'm like, what's Honda Challenge? He's like, oh, it's one of the NASA things. And I'm sitting there going, what are you talking about? Because 
there is no Honda Challenge in Nassau Great Lakes, but yeah, there is so. there is in Northeast, there is in Mid Atlantic, there is down yep. south, there is in Texas, there is in California. But if you're in Ohio and you want to race with NASA, you want to be first place, enter Honda Challenge. You want to be last place, enter <laughs> Honda Challenge. You get them all for the same yeah. price. So yeah, don't don't be a don't be a lonely laddie or a lady out there unless you really want to. Pay attention yeah. to pay attention to what people are doing. That I'm glad I'm glad I'm glad that popped in my mind because <laughs> I almost built a spec focus. Well, almost mm-hmm. good thing. Good thing you were focused on it, though. Man. <laughs> good thing I laser focused on uh, laser, taking those results. Laser focus. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, everybody. Thank thanks. you. Thanks for having me. That was fun. Thanks, thanks, listener, for asking. That was awesome. That good was question. awesome. <laughs>